Good day, everyone, and welcome to Home at the Hollow, and welcome to my kitchen. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today's recipe is a simple roasted pork tenderloin. A healthy, healthy recipe that I hope that you will give a try. And without further ado, healthy pork tenderloin with apples and onions. I want to quickly go through our ingredient list. This is about two pounds of a pork tenderloin, a couple of spoonfuls of extra virgin olive oil or vegetable oil, whatever kind of oil you have, two medium onions, two or three, depending on, on what your preference is, this does call for like three medium Granny Smith apples. Of course, I'm gonna put an extra one in here, have a little extra sauce, because because the apples and the onions are what's going to make our incredible, delicious sauce. A couple of tablespoons of butter. If you have fresh thyme, then that is wonderful. I have just thyme leaves, so a couple of teaspoons of thyme leaves or fresh thyme salt and pepper, and some chicken stock or chicken broth to reduce. And those are, this is basically our list of ingredients. But the first thing that we want to do is to look at your, your pork tenderloin. Now this one, actually I started out with a five pound pork tenderloin and cut it in half. The rest of it, <clears throat> excuse me, I froze for another recipe. And if you're interested in that extra recipe, leave me a comment below. I'm always interested in what you guys want to see and what you want to know about. But I'm going to just, if I can, just a couple of, a little bit of oil on here. A little bit. You're gonna use a little bit in your pan as well. Salt and pepper on both sides. If you have any, uh, uh, what do they call it? Like s s silvering on your pork, go ahead and, and this would be a great time before you salt and pepper it to, <laughs> to cut that right off. But this is just simply, fat that I feel comfortable uh, working with. A little bit of salt and pepper and get it ready to go and, to, and sear in the Dutch oven. So I'm preheating my Dutch oven here. I have a little bit of oil in here going to add just a little bit more, not a lot, a little bit. And it's, oh, it's looking really hot, looking really good. So we're going to go ahead and get this. I'm going to start on my fat side first. I think you guys can see. And what we want to do is to brown this very well on all sides, ends and sides. So I have browned this and it's looking pretty good. You want a little, little bit of bits in the bottom of your Dutch oven and I can still see and I'm going to go ahead and remove this. I still see I have a little bit of oil left in. If it's totally dry, if you if your pork loin has soaked up all of your oil, of course, add a little bit more. I think I'm okay. I might need to add a little bit more, but I've got my oil standing by. I've got my onions and my apples. Uh, my onions... It, 
it really does not matter how you don't want to do cut them too small because they will just totally disappear and I cut all of my apples into eighths and I'm using Granny Smith they will stay firm they'll be tart with this particular pork cut and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just saute these here for probably about five minutes. I, as a matter of fact, I think I'm going to set my timer. And I'm, I don't know, every, you know, cooktop is different, but I've got mine on six. And I, I didn't find it necessary, if anyone is wondering to sprinkle any kind of lemon on my apples. These are going to cook right down to a really super, super nice sauce for this pork, and a healthy one, I think, too. I'm not a dietitian. I'm not a nutritionist or anything like that, but to me, when you're making your sauce with maybe a little bit of olive oil, apples, onions, and some chicken broth, I think that's a, a good combination. And so I'm going to just let this saute and brown this for the next five minutes. As you can probably hear, my timer's gone off. This is the end of five minutes. And what I'm going to do, I never had to add any additional oil to this, but I'm going to add... This isn't even really probably, this is like a half a tablespoon of butter. Salted, unsalted, it doesn't matter. About a teaspoon of your thyme. And just give this a very gentle stir. I wish you guys could smell this. Oh yes, it is gonna be incredible and I'm going to I've turned my heat off and I'm going to just let this set I'm going to cover it and then we're going to go and turn our attention back to our tenderloin here if I can get this fork out of here What I'm going to do is, uh, I'm not sure if I said in the intro, as far as my ingredients list is concerned, uh, you will need about, about two tablespoons of Dijon mustard, and I'm going to just spread this over my tenderloin. See if I can turn this over. It's cooled off enough to where I can handle it. And this is the fatty side over here. And that's just about it. Let's see. Take the rest of your time here. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit right here. Sprinkle it all over your, your tenderloin. Let me set this right here. And always away from your face. Always. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our tenderloin and what I'm going to do is the the fat side you guys saw the fat side I had I'm going to have it on the top right here I don't want I don't want it to sit in there and simmer like that and I'm going to just cover it right back up bake this at 425 until your internal temperature reaches 
about 140, 145. Um, I cannot tell you how long that's going to take. It probably, you know, depending on your oven, one of the key reasons that you will have success with this particular recipe is you want to cook your pork tenderloin quickly and hot very very hot i know 425 seems like a hot oven and it is but you want to quick and hot and it, it will keep the moisture inside um and there you go so but what I'm going to do, now this is what, if you want to go ahead and just take this and put this right in the oven straight away, then 425 until it reaches 140, 145, you might want to go as high as 150, depending on, you know, your personal preference. I probably, I, knowing me, I probably will go about 150. Uh, but it's certainly safe to eat at 140, 145, bring it out, and of course, let it rest. But what I'm going to do as kind of an experiment here, I'm, I've got it to this point, and I'm going to, I've got a, a, a really busy day like most days. Um, I'm going to set this aside, and when I think that, you know, it's time to, to start get it, gearing up for dinner, I'm going to put it and bake it off just like this. So I don't know if that means it probably, more than likely, it will take me a little bit longer to get to, let's just say, 150. Um, but you, you know, you do you, and I will show you guys the next step while your pork tenderloin is baking. And I should have mentioned my apologies, but when you go to roast this or bake this off in the oven, uncover from your Dutch oven, bake this uncovered at 425. While your pork tenderloin is roasting, I've got one cup of our chicken stock, chicken broth, whatever it is that you have. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, of course, be working in the kitchen cleaning up a bit but I've got this and I'm going to let this simmer and you know boil down uh, a little bit um, probably about eight minutes because when you take your pork out when your pork is done and done this you want to add into your apples and your onions but we'll, we'll get to that but while your pork's going reduce this down about eight minutes. So I allowed this pork tenderloin to reach 156, something like that. I just kind of felt better about having it at a little bit of a higher temperature. That's just me. Pro probably really, really old school, but this is, this is what we're looking at, guys. It looks really, really good. I'm going to take this out of here. Oops. <laughs> and I'm going to cover it with some aluminum foil for about 15 minutes. While my tenderloin is covered and taking a well-deserved break, I've got my apples and my onions here. Make sure I, I keep my glove on or I will forget. This is very, very hot. I have simmered my chicken stock down. I'm going to add that to my pot here. And I'm going to get, I think, something like this and just kind of stir this around. I've got the heat on a little bit. And stir this around. You might need to add maybe a little bit more chicken stock, but this apple and onion makes an incredible sauce. You can see the bits of thyme in here. This is going to be very nice. I'm trying to scrape up all the little little bits on the bottom. Not necessarily on the side here, but on the bottom. And this will make a beautiful, beautiful serving sauce over your pork tenderloin. 
I started baking a, cup, a couple of sweet potatoes, the very last of my on sale sweet potatoes, but I'm um, baking the last of them. And I got a little bit of a side salad happening. And this is going to be my dinner. And I, I could tell when I removed the pork tenderloin and put it on the plate, it is definitely going to be tender. This is going to be an exceptional meal. And you know, and really actually pretty easy. I, if you haven't already, I encourage you to get yourself a really, you know, as best that you can afford Dutch oven. You may already have one. But they are just, oh my goodness, they are so nice. And uh, I know there's a lot of people that do like slow cookers, and I like them too, and they do have their place. But for a piece of meat like this, I think a, in this case, a very hot oven is going to be the reason why we have a very tender pork tenderloin. Hi guys, I hope that you have been enjoying my recipes that I'm so thrilled to share with. I hope that you give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell for when I do upload, typically once a week, sometimes more often depending on the holidays or my mood. But your support means so, so much to me, so subscribe. Give me a thumbs up and hit the notification bell. And so I am back and I'm hoping this has rested long enough. I did spoon some of the sauce that I made and it's not really like a drippy sauce. This is kind of like a, I don't know, but it's apples and onions and oh my goodness, guys. This is exceptional. A little bit of chicken broth, a little bit of thyme flakes. And let's see how this, I don't think you guys can see this. That is a shame. It looks so pretty too. Makes a great presentation. I think you guys move my plate over just a little bit. I wish that you guys could smell this. Oh my goodness, it's so smells so nice. I haven't tasted not one moment, not one bit. And yes, it's done just fine. I believe it was 155. I'm going to take just this small piece and put a little bit of this on here. I really want to, I just, oh, the smell is so if you want to drive some of your family crazy going, oh, what is that? What is that? This will do it. But a little bit of sauce. I'm going to take me a wee bit of a taste. I have a feeling this is going to be just really, really special. This is kind of like the equivalent of doing the short ribs, sort of. The short ribs takes longer. This is hot and quick <laughs> or not like quick quick but you know it doesn't take hours and hours and hours um i honestly did not keep track of the time that it was in the oven at 425 what i did is uh after 45 minutes i put in my thermometer i've got one that you can just and pull and have right out of the oven door and uh, so when it got to 150, I'm like, mm. and that's when I, you know, turned it off, pulled it out and let it rest a little bit. But 150, 155 for me. But if you don't like onions, I'm, I'm not, really, not really sure you're going to be too keen on this, but better than I imagined. Huge, huge thumbs up. So if you think that this is a recipe that 
your family's going to enjoy. If you think they want maybe something a little bit different, the aroma of this ba roasting baking in the oven will drive them nuts. Dro drive them nuts. This is A1 delicious. I'm telling you, it's superb. I hope that you give this recipe a try. Thank you again for joining me here, home at the Hollow. Goodbye, guys.